Hi, so in video 2270, we talked about making things move, in particular, the pin joint. Now, I said in that video that things like hinges and chains were great examples of pin joints, and of course, right there is a hinge. They're one of those everyday things that are absolutely everywhere and we tend to ignore. So, what I was thinking is we'd go and look at how you would model something like this and then 3D print it, how you would model and 3D print a chain, and then an alternative to the pin hinge, because some of the concepts in there are key to how you would model anything. Now, surprisingly, when you're modelling, or in fact making real stuff, there are only two approaches. You can either build up or you can cut down, and they are what they say on the tin. Build up is where you add material to form the shape that you want, and an example of that would be something like sculpture, clay sculpture, for example. Cut down is where you begin with a big block of material and remove the excess you don't want, so things like drilling, milling, filing, to create the shape out of the block. Now, the odd thing is it doesn't matter what you do, those two toe approaches are always available to you and are the only two approaches ever used, whether it's in real life with hand tools or on the computer with a design program. So let's use a hinge as an example of that and design it in Tinkercad using both build up and cut down. So if we open Tinkercad in a new workspace, we're of course on the work plane and I've placed my ruler and so we're now ready to model our component, which is the hinge. Now remember, every component is made of parts. So what we have to do is decide what the parts are. Of course, in the hinge, they're not particularly difficult. There's a flaps, barrel and a pin, but we still need to recognize those parts and then make those parts. So let's make the barrel. And the barrel is just a cylinder. So place a cylinder primitive and we can make that cylinder nice and smooth and make it exactly the size that we want. And in my case, I'm going to make it 10 by 10 by 10. Of course, we need a hole in the center there because we're going to put a pin in it. And so we take the hole primitive smooth it out and we need to decide the size of our hole in this case i wanted to be six by six and then if i align those by highlighting the two of them with the cursor hit the align button align it to this there and there and if we then merge those what we've got is a part of our barrel and in this we've used a cut down process with two primitives because we've removed that center section to cut out the shape that we want now it's not quite right of course because we need it to attach to something and so we need a little bit sticking out so we can attach it to the flap and here I've used the block primitive and I want it again round about the same 10 by 10 and then on the height it's going to be the height thickness of the hinge let's call that four so we've got our block primitive we've got our cylinder cut down that's obviously not in the right orientation so we can change that orientation around 90 degrees and then we can align the two so if we align those two to that by there and there and we have our little flap nicely in the center there but of course we want to move it out by five millimeters and we do that by making sure that that is set at one and press the cursor arrow five times one two three four five if we were to unite those of course we'd have this lump so just highlight that unmerge it highlight the whole thing and then merge it again and we've got a hinge primitive now i want five of those so i can duplicate that duplicate and i can move it up so i've copied them five times and this one i've swiveled to 180 degrees because that'll be the other side of the hinge now what we can do is take a block primitive to create the other component we need which is the flap so let's make that 25 and of course four high and the question is how far here do you make it? We're going to have five intermeshing, each one of these is 10, so you would think 50. But we need to leave a little gap. And if we leave a gap of 0.1 millimeter, then if we make that 50.8, we'll have enough of a gap so that these don't actually catch on each other. But again, they're all over the place when we're making hinges. So what we need to do is align those. So if we align those two, and only to that edge there, then click, shift key click that one and we can align those two to the middle portion here and then this last one 
we can align to the bottom there. If we take these three, then we can align those three all to that edge there so that they're nicely in line and then be in line like that. And now we can create one piece out of that by uniting them and we get our single piece. What we need to do is move that to be directly onto that. So if we zoom into that, we need that to go but against that edge. And it's a neat little trick in Tinkercad that allows you to do that and that's the work plane tool. So click on that, put the work plane right on there, then click on that and press D and it drops it right onto the new work plane that you've put on. To clear that, click the work plane and just put it into some space somewhere or other. Now these are absolutely but against the flap that we've just made and if we align those again, then we can just check the alignment hasn't moved by clicking that and there is one side of our hinge complete and we united and we've got a complete hinge. If what we do now is just duplicate that, we can move that out of the way and then we can more or less do exactly the same thing that we've just done. If we take that one there and align that to this edge here and then we take these two and align them to the bottom edge, then remember these are going to be 10 millimeters, I guess 10 millimeters apart from each other. So we need them somewhere around about there. That setting there is at 10. So if we click on that and move it down with the down arrow, 10. then that will be almost in position. Change that setting to 0.1 and once more with the down arrow and that will be in position. That one, same thing, only change that back to one, up in 10. Change that back to 0.1 and then up 0.1. And then we get it, these will now be in line with there and all we have to do is unite them there. So let's just make sure we haven't moved any the alignment away. Yep, we're good. And then we can do exactly the same thing using that work plane tool, zoom in on it. Take our work plane, make sure that it's there. Unite those and then drop them onto the work plane. Now we can get rid of the work plane and we have those perfectly aligned there. Now when we've made them we can have a quick look just to make sure all the alignment is really nice and we've got enough gap for that hinge to actually work. On here I haven't bothered putting holes in because we're going to 3D print it and we'll glue it onto something. We'd use exactly the same cut down to place holes in that flap where you would want to put your screws. All we've got to do now is make a hinge and of course we made that six millimeters across but with this what we really need to do is to give it a bit of clearance so let's smooth those sides of the cylinder and we need to make that say 5.6 to 5.8 that'll make sure that the hinge will the pin will go into the hinge without it snaring up but with enough clearance to make it work if we make that 50 and that's going to be our hinge pin and again we need to orientate that round and when it does that it does around the center so we can see that it's actually off the work plane and if we press d remember it will drop it to the work plane so that's the magic key to drop things to the work plane is d and we use that to make sure that these two surfaces of this barrel component to the flat component were directly surface to surface we can put a little cap on that if we want but now we're ready to print and when we've printed it, this is what we get. So those two go together, the pin drops in the center. There we go, and we have our working hinge. Now, this is not really a Tinkercad tutorial. I mean, I thought it was kind of interesting with that work plane and the D key so that you could align surfaces so well. But the whole thing is about how to go around designing components using parts with cut down or build up. That methodology, goes outside of Tinkercad to pretty much all design. If anybody's feeling like it, then a bit of homework would be to use the same methodology, but to create a chain.
Now a link, hint, you only need to create one link and then repeat it. I'll do a tutorial video on chain making as part of this, but that is how you go around thinking about making components, breaking it into parts using cutout or build up as the methodology, linking them together to make yourself what you want to make. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.